Welcome back to day three. We are going to talk about how to stay focused and motivated all year, even on the days you don't want to, no matter what life throws your way. So Amber, tell me, how do you stay motivated? How do you do that on the days where you don't feel like you want to be motivated and on those days where it's like, oh my gosh, life is real hard today. How do you keep going? Life, it gets hard. We have so much evidence of that (laughs) in the last several years. And the thing I want to say first and foremost is that our approach to setting goals, reaching goals, building your plans to make sure you reach those goals, um, we prioritize you first and foremost. So I want to kick this off by saying there are going to be some days where you're like, I cannot today. Life threw me a curveball, and I have to take hours. I got to move some things around if I have meetings. I've got to see if I can move some deadlines. And this is okay. This is okay because we can only do so much. This is why I want you to have margin in your calendar. Mm. If the average person looked at their to do list right now, they would have more than 40 hours of work to do. Uh, more than 40 hours just on the to-do list. What, I don't know if that's today, this week, but, and then I, I shared this actually with a client and she said, oh gosh, I won't get my to-do list done in this lifetime. It is so long. <laughs> There's so much going. We create to do society creates to do things pop up that we think we need to be doing or should be doing. So I want everyone to create margin in your calendar. So what does this mean? This means that I want you to have space in your calendar in case you need to move things around. So you cannot have every day, all week, all the time filled up. I know there's a saying out there that like, and there's a lot of productivity research that says schedule it. If it's not scheduled, it's not going to get done. And if that works for you, schedule the things that matter. The big rocks the big rocks, but don't schedule everything. Where is your margin? If your life is so packed, I look at some people's calendars and it's like every minute is scheduled. Where do you have room to enjoy this one beautiful, precious life we are creating? Where do you have time to strategize and let your brain work? I was on a recent vacation where I did no work at all no work at all. And, but my brain's working and I've got things that are popping up in the background and I'm not doing anything on them. And ahas pop up all the time. I'm in the pool. Aha. I'm in the shower. Aha. I'm sure. Have you ever experienced something like this? hundred percent of the time when I am not at my desk having to work, I am getting ahas. I am getting those. Oh, that's a fabulous idea. I, I would not have thought about that sitting, trying to work through my, I think mine is like a 60 hour to-do list. So when you were saying that, I was like, Ooh, so yeah, I get those <laughs> ahas not at my desk, <laughs> not at my desk. The ahas emerge. And if everything is so tightly scheduled, we know the ahas pop up in the space in between creative ideas, strategy, business plan, like all those beautiful, incredible things that we're going to put into action, but you've got to have space. And if there's no space, where do we get this fresh perspective? So we want to create margin in your calendar for the unexpected and for your creative, strategic, growth-oriented mindsets to expand. So we want to have simple simplicity and space in our calendar. And I want to get super specific here. I want you to schedule only max 80% of your work week. So if you've got 40 hours of work that you plan to get done this week, right, or, or you've got 40 hours of time to work, only schedule 32 of them. Cause I want you to have 20% margin for unexpected, for Oz, for going like, okay, I'm going to, I got to step my desk for a minute and let some things flow here. So own schedule. And I say 80%, not 32 hours a week, because your schedule may be, I'm only working 30 hours a week. The rest of my time is carved out for something else, which is a beautiful thing. 
So we want to include that spaciousness in your calendar. So don't pack too much into your plan. Uh, Shay, I have some more uh, ideas I want to share on this, but first I want to pause and see what's coming up for you. For me, when you were talking about that, as somebody who's a CEO of my business, I have Mondays and Fridays where I actually don't have any space in there except my CEO time and then also content creation. So I actually purposely schedule in that off time um, yeah. where I have four hours on those days where I don't have anything going on. Nobody can book calls with me because I know that I want that spaciousness. I want the importance of saying, okay, I don't need to pack too much in. I can recognize that some things might change or even I might want to do something for myself. And as I'm doing those things for my self-care for me, that's where I'm also getting the ahas. So I would love to hear more about that, like how not to pack too much in and also recognizing that things do change. So don't over plan. Yeah, you're spot on. And I think we have this tendency, we want to do so much, right? I want to climb Mount Everest. I don't want to climb Mount Everest, but let's say oh, that's no, a goal. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And so we've got these goals. I want to run, uh, I want to run a marathon. I want to learn French. I want to like, there are all these things that we want to do. And that creates this, okay, I got to get it all in. Well, maybe not. Remember we talked about it yesterday. We're focusing on three moonshot goals. Focus on the things that really matter. This is why we are, we break it down further into three. And we, we highlighted this yesterday. We want you to only have three core to-dos per day and pull that up another level. We want you to have three primary things to do per week. Yeah. And then we're going to roll that up another level because we want you to plan at the monthly level. We don't want to wait until we get another year circles round 12 months from now. I set those goals. I mean, people do this every year, New Year's. I'm going to get in shape this year. I'm going to, and then it's in November rolls around like, shoot, I have two more months to get in shape. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't go all year and I wanted to. So we want to make sure that we're planning for success sooner so we can make adjustments in that margin that we've left in our calendar throughout the week and throughout the year and throughout the months. So I'm going to walk you through now how we do this inside Stay Golden, where we're going to create your monthly forecast. So take a peek with me as we dive into the monthly forecast, where we focus on a small number of things to do each month that's going to pull through to your weeks and your days. I have clicked over to our monthly forecast tab. At the beginning of each month, you are invited to complete your monthly forecast inside Stay Golden. And it's not done here yet. You can see this is open. When this is complete, this is going to fill in. That sunshine is going to fill right in. So each month, I want to invite you to identify what your theme for the month is and what you are most excited about this month. I am most excited about Stay Golden. We build in reflection points into many spaces inside Stay Golden because reflection has such a high impact on you reaching your goals, the performance of yourself and of your company, if you're part of a team or a company, and people who reflect are happier. So there's a lot of research behind that. Then each month inside the monthly forecast, I want to invite you to identify the things that you need to do to take action toward reaching your moonshot goals. Because if we're not taking action, we're not going to get where we want to be going. So you can write down in here all the action steps you need to take. So I'm just going to fill in some spaces here right now. And my when I was speaking with my sister about this, actually, she's like, what if I don't know what steps I need to take? Listen, if you don't know what steps you need to take, this is something we want to work on. And so I want you to identify some action steps that may be appropriate for the project that you have in mind. 
Let's say that you want to start to get some movement into your day, but you don't know what kind of movement. You haven't decided on the kind of movement. You haven't decided on a schedule. You have some questions around what kind of movement would be best for you based on your goals. Okay, so then what your action steps might be, like I'm gonna research types of exercise that might be good for me. Um, I, in fact, pulled this example because I recently went through this exact scenario myself. I knew I wanted to get into some sort of movement again, and I had a curiosity around something called slow running. So I did some research on slow running, and I identified that that was going to be a good thing for me. Very, very, very slow running. And it's so slow, my husband walks next to me if I am slow running. But it works for me. And this is what matters here. The, the action steps and the goals that you set work for you. So you can then start. Uh, oh, I downloaded a slow running app. Running app. And I... Uh, plan to slow run weekly. And so what you're going to do when you identify your personal action steps that support you reaching your goals, you're going to actually just list up to 15 steps. If it's a four-week month, you might only want to list 12 steps. But if it's a five-week month, which absolutely happens, you can list 15 steps. And after you list all of these steps that you need to take over the course of the month to reach your goals, you're going to complete the monthly forecast. Now, this is really exciting because you are planning for success. You can see our monthly forecast here is complete. Oh, you can also kind of see this little peak in the corner that I earned a star. So I am racking up some points for getting my monthly forecast done and I'm going to show you in an upcoming Stay Golden video this week how this monthly forecast is going to pull through into your week to help you get in action. But it's a beautiful thing right here, simply completing this monthly forecast because you've identified the steps you need to take to start moving towards your goals. This is going to bring clarity. This is going to bring focus. When you sit down to work, we're not going to get distracted by shiny objects. You're going to come in here and you're going to identify the top things you need to be doing this week. And oh, by the way, if you're like, oh, I need to switch step six with step three, you can just shimmy these around and update, complete the monthly forecast. So this is an important thing because so often people don't plan for how they're going to reach their goals and the day just happens. And then you get to the end of the day, you get to the end of the week, you get to the end of the month. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I even do? We're going to get clarity on what you need to do to move towards your goals right here in Stay Golden. And there's a space for you to do it. And this is going to help you every single week get in action in your golden hour. But again, I'm going to tell you more about that later. For now, document some of your action steps and build out your monthly forecast if you have joined us inside Stay Golden already. Shay, I know that you're using the monthly forecast and you're pulling that through. How does it feel for you to have less things to focus on? At first, it was different because we are taught to do all the things but now I feel so spacious and when things have popped up, when things have been thrown at me, I realize I have that space to actually go in and add it in because I didn't plan 42 things for me to do. <laughs> Why don't we talk about that a little more? Why don't we talk about, let's say it's actually raining here right now. Let's say we need a rainy day plan. What? Can you share about that with us and how we can fix that if things happen with our plans? Yeah, so good. So, uh, you know, you mentioned something interesting. Sometimes we're going to find that momentum's flowing. Like I have this spaciousness, a new idea came up. I'm going to keep on rolling with it. Keep on rolling. Our objective is not to 
stifle you and hold you back. If you've got momentum, if you've got flow, which by the way, so often happens when we focus and have this spaciousness. This is a trick I use with the kids cleaning. I feel like you may have used this before too, where we'll set a timer in the house. We're going to spend 15 minutes cleaning yes. up and we're like, okay, let's go. Let's go. And, and beautiful things come out of that. Either the house is clean and we're done in 15 minutes. And sometimes the house is clean. We're still going like, all right, we got the mojo. Like, let's go. So you don't have to, this isn't restriction. This is focus. So if it's flowing, flow with it. And on the flip side, we want to plan for those rainy days. So you've got margin in there to move things around. I have known people and it, at one point in my life, I could not move anything because there was nowhere to move it. If I move yep. this, where is it going to go? If something comes up, if something happens. And to be honest, I had a rainy day today. And I knew I'm like, I cannot do any of those things except this one thing that we set out to do together here. I'm going to show up for that one thing because that's the number one priority for the day and everything else I'm going to move. And what did I do instead? So we want you to have your rainy day plan. We're just going to call it a rainy day plan. Simple. And so when things aren't going your way, when, you know, you've got a migraine day or you've got something else that came up in your life unexpectedly that you, you, you couldn't plan for, well, we're going to plan for it. We're going to plan to be able to move things around. You just set your calendar up that way, I hope. And other things you may want to put into your rainy day toolbox. Could you reach out to someone in your support circle? Mm. Could you take a break. I created a big giant break for myself today. Can you tidy up your physical space? Sometimes simply by moving things in our physical space, the energy will shift. Yes. Uh, if there are things that are coming up online, block those distractions. Let me turn those off for the day. Let me go internal. Let me go inside. Move goals to tomorrow. Let me shift these. That's going to be okay. I can shift these around. Something else I recommend is that if you're having a rainy day, just take a look at your goals, ground in purpose, ground in the meaning. So that would mean keeping your goals front and center. So you can just re really ground in them and the purpose, right? Because all those distractions come up. I'm like, let me just reground to what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Something else I do is standing with your arms wide open. So we talked about physical space, like on your desk but physically changing what you're doing and how you're showing up. When we're working like this and operating like this, where it's a different energy than if we're doing this. So change, open your arms. And then there are other things that you've probably heard before, you've probably done before. Uh, take a bath, throw Epsom salts in there, take a nap, meditate. Mm -hmm. The benefits, exercise, go on a walk, just get outside, take your shoes off and ground. Not where you are right now, Shay. It is cold. It is cold. <laughs> I do that and you are. <laughs> uh, uh, so there are things that you can put in your toolbox that are true, like nourish your soul, nourish your mind, nourish your body, nourish your spirit. Um, and so, so many free space things you could add, but we wanted to give you some ideas for your rainy day plan uh, to get you I started. Love I love those. For me, actually, I just want to tell you a couple things that I do. I stand up and I will turn on music for a few minutes just to get me out of my own head and I will dance. I, I'm one of the people who also take a nap too. Like, <laughs> I'm just the, nope, not happening today. I'm going to take a nap. And it's going to be fabulous. So hopefully some of these have helped you to come up with an idea on what you want to do. Our golden game today is sharing your rainy day plan with us. As you take a few minutes to ponder, hey, what are some of the things that I can do if plans don't go as planned? Um, share them in the comments below so that you can play and also so we can give you some sunshine on your rainy day. And so that you can help others and give others that sunshine too. Now, before we go, we also have our golden bonus step as well. This is always optional, but.
but highly encouraged because we would love to have you with us. Make sure you complete your first monthly forecast in the monthly forecast section in our Stay Golden platform. We would absolutely love to have you in there. Click the link below and register now if that's something that you're feeling called to do. Um, we would love to have you. Oh my gosh, so good. I cannot wait. Like now is the time. Start building that monthly forecast because we have a beautiful fresh start here at any time. You can decide that you have a fresh start and the sooner you build your monthly forecast, the sooner you're going to be able to get in action on those focused goals and start getting the progress to those goals that you want. And we're going to walk you through it every step of the way. And the other that. thing, okay, I want to make sure people know when you comment below and you're registered for stay golden week, you can register using the link below as well. We're going to send you the workbook for this week's golden week. And when you comment below, you'll also be entered to win the daily prize. And we're going to email out those winners every single day as we move through the week, because we want to shower you with encouragement to take the next step. Because when you get in action, we don't know what's going to happen. I cannot guarantee those results, but I know when you get in action, you're going to move closer to where you want to be. And we're going to find joy on this journey. Yes, I said it again. Joy in the journey. Let's do it. Amber, do you want to share quick about the VIP session that we have coming up? Oh my gosh, what a good idea. On Saturday, we are hosting a live interactive VIP session. So for anyone who's participating in Golden Week with us, you know where to register, the link's below. If you're here participating in Golden Week and you join us inside Stay Golden, I'm going to be hosting a live interactive session on Saturday where we're going to go deeper into our Stay Golden approaches. I'm going to be there to answer the questions that you have. Um, and it's going to be cozy. It's going to be intimate. It's going to be real time. And I would love to hang out with you. I don't usually hang out on a Saturday. I'm usually off with my family, but this is such a special week and we want to harness that momentum and spend that time with you to keep this going as we step into the new year. So, oh my gosh, Shay, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I'd love to see as many people there as possible in that VIP session on Saturday. Absolutely. Thank you for spending day three with us. We cannot wait to see you tomorrow. Um, but also join us and stay golden if you're feeling called to it. So you can hop in on that amazing VIP session. And because we want to see your monthly forecast as well. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.